We're irreverent, sacrilegious, blasphemous even. And yet God is saying, come to me all who are weary, all who labor, labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus is saying, come to me and I will lift you up. He'll give you a, a yoke that is easy to carry. That you can be steered by the grace of God, led by the hand of God, uplifted by the arm of God, justified by the power of God. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thought. Let us turn to the Lord and he will have mercy. We saw all oh, this foolish man speaking on the street. Man, I'm here because I care about you and I don't want you to die in your sin. There was a lady just the other day in New York City that got pushed onto the subway tracks unprovoked. She was just a woman minded her own business getting ready to get on the tube in New York City, did nothing to nobody, and somebody comes and pushes her onto the tracks, and she dies. She did nothing. But it doesn't matter if we're ready to die or not. Death is certain, and we're going to face it. The question is, are you ready to face Jesus? Because the state of your soul and what will happen to you for all of eternity is being weighed in the balance. I don't care what you think about me. Love Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Live for Jesus. Repent and believe the gospel. That he died on the cross so that you might be saved from hell. So that you might have relationship with the Father. So that you might be able to walk in righteousness and holiness in the Spirit of God. So that you might have the power over sin to acknowledge that we are sinners in need of a Savior who rescue you so that we can be better than we are because right now we need so much help. Oh, my friend, we need so much help. Our society is crumbling and we're divided by everything. Our government's dividing us by everything. Christianity being openly mocked and scorned on television and you don't even, most of you don't even realize what the true gospel is or what Jesus represents because you've been given a caricature of Christianity your entire life and so of course you're unable to take it seriously because you don't even know what Christianity is about. God bless you. But my friend, God is saying, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Open a Bible, download it on your phone, it's free. And in the Word of God, there is life. And the promises of God can be unveiled to your soul. And you know what? You never have to have anxiety or fear or depression or despair ever again. And if we do, it doesn't mean that God has failed us. But it means we need to get closer to Him because in a perfect world, in a vacuum, theoretically, if we trust God perfectly, there will be no room for anxiety and fear because we know that God is in control. And my friend, we can know that God is in control of today, tomorrow, and every other day. And the Bible says that He catches your tears in a bottle. The Bible says that He will never leave you nor forsake you, that He's an anchor for your soul. The Bible says that the the tears last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Pour out your tears unto God. Take Him your burdens and your pain. And say, God, I don't know if you're real, but if you are, make yourself known to me. Show me your heart. Show me your love. I'm hurting. I'm tired of hurting. Open my soul so that I can know that something exists that's deeper and more meaningful than this existence that I have known. And my friends, if you cry out to Jesus, if you call out to the name of God, He will be faithful. He will answer you. The Bible says that He has not left the righteous forsaken nor His seed begging for bread. That means He takes care of His children. 
And in the darkest of days, when the problems of life overwhelm us, we can know that God is faithful and He'll get us through the storm. He didn't promise to prevent the storm, or He didn't ever promise that you wouldn't have problems, but you can know that the Creator of heaven and earth is in control, and that in His hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. And when you are weak and when you are failing in all forms of life, you can know that God is faithful and He loves you so much. The mercies of God are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. His compassions do not fail. Okay. That God is faithful, my friends, to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. He is faithful. He wants to give you more in life than you can know, but we have to run to Him. We have to believe in Him. We have to trust in Him. Many of us... We say we believe in God, we believe in a higher power, we believe in a creator. But we don't know anything past that. Because we haven't read our Bible. We haven't read the Word of God in the Word of God. In the book of life, there is life. Not talking about the Lamb's book of life, I'm talking about the Word of life. In the Bible, there is life. Eat the word and you will have life. Because one day we will stand before God and everything is contingent upon is your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Have you been saved by the grace of God? Will he say on that day, well done my good and faithful servant, enter into my rest. Or will he say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. My friend, I'm wicked. We're all wicked without the shed blood of Jesus, without the righteousness of Christ, without His grace. We are wicked. We don't want to say it. The only time we say wicked is if we're going to the, to the theater to watch the show. But with Jesus, there is life and hope and grace and mercy. And without Him, we are wicked. We are sinners in need of a Savior. We can't just show up at the throne of God and be like, yo, homie, let me in. That's not how it works. If you were to stand before the Queen of England, you would have reverence and respect, even if she has, you know, no political power. I don't know how your government works, but I think that's how it works. You would revere her. You would respect her. You'd probably even bow before her. How much more should we bow before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? whose kingdom is without end, whose kingdom is of eternal significance. And in the Bible it says that if we belong to Him, we will be heirs with Christ and joint heirs in the kingdom of God. To live with Him, Jesus said, I go before you to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. And if you belong to Him, if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, He will come. He is returning. He's going to come back one day. And if you're on this earth in that time, and you belong to Him, oh, my friend, that day is coming where we will be gathered together in the clouds. We're going to be without Jesus. Oh, but there will be many who will be left. And I don't know what they're going to tell you happens, but it ain't going to be the truth. In dark days, are ahead for all of society throughout all the countries of the world. We as Christians, we know how the story ends. It's not with rainbows and butterflies. It's with a new heaven and a new earth because this earth will be burnt up with fire. But we know that our hope and our trust is in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we want you to be saved. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you can be saved through the sin of one man, Adam, in the garden, sin into the world. Through the sacrifice of one man, Jesus Christ, sin was taken care of at the cross. It was paid for in full. You can go to Jesus and receive life and we must be born again. He will take his spirit and put it inside of you and you can become a temple of the most high God where you will love what he loves, hate what he hates. You'll delight in righteousness. You'll live to please him. You'll want to call him Lord and Savior. Your whole heart will change. You'll begin to have love and mercy and compassion. 
for your enemies. You'll start blessing people you don't even like and praying for people you despise because that's the heart of God. And then as God changes our hearts, He changes our soul, we can have eternal assurance knowing that if we die serving our God, loving our God, belonging to our God, that when we leave this earth, we will be with our God. Because we belong to Him, our souls have been stamped and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, marked by the mark of God. Belonging to Him, we have been raised from the dead to be alive with Christ as new creations. And this is the Bible, my friends. If you read the Word of God, you will read all of this. This is not me creating a dialogue from my own brain. This is me just telling you what the Bible says. That we can know we belong to Jesus. We can know that we are loved by Jesus. We can know that we are not alone. That He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll be the anchor for our soul. Just as Jesus walked across stormy seas, we also can on this earth, not physically, but spiritually. That through the storms of life, we can stay afloat. So much the storms of life want to pull us under and swallow us up and we feel like we're drowning, we're hurting, we're miserable and we're broken and Jesus will hold us up and He'll carry us across the waves of the sea and He'll say, stay steadfast. Hope in me, persevere, don't give up, finish the race, because our promise, our eternal reward is with Him. So as we finish this race, by faith, trusting in the power of God to keep us, we can know that we have finished with honor and grace. We can know that God is holding us in the love that He has promised us. See, the Word of God each and every day holds us close, keeps us on track, keeps us encouraged. He loves you. You are not forgotten. God bless you. Do you know Jesus? Yeah? Just need some encouragement tonight? Yeah? Are you hurting? Yeah? You want some prayer? Is it okay? What's your name? Alana? Oh, she's Brazilian. You speak Portuguese? Yes. Oh, praise God. I might, uh, I might, is it okay if I let her speak to you? Yes. Okay, praise God. Yeah. Okay, praise God. Where are you from in Brazil? Minas Gerais. Meu Jesus me ensinou E eu não esqueci A vida só me machucou Por isso estou aqui Com a Bíblia aberta O teu evangelho Para receber A luz que eu preciso De joelho orando Implorando um pouco Da tua presença Do teu paraíso Jesus Christ is King, is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, is King of Glory, He's the Great I Am. God loved you so much, He sent His Son here to die for you. Jesus came to this earth with one purpose in mind, and that was to go to the cross as a ransom for the sin of many to take the certificate of debt for all the sin that we have committed against God and to pay that price through the shedding of His blood. And there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. So we have the sacrifice of Christ that gives us access to the Father, access to God, the Creator, the One who created the wind and the waves and painted the canvas of the sky that hangs the stars that makes the sun shine every single day and the moon reflecting the glory of God. You see, we must understand that all of nature is ordered by the Lord. And that order comes 
from the direction of the Lord as he speaks all of creation testifies of his glory and reacts in obedience except for man because in the garden of Eden man chose to sin against God Adam chose to listen to Eve as she was beguiled by the serpent he ate from the fruit sin entered the world and because of sin we are separated from God but that wasn't the end of the story. God had a plan to bring man back to himself through the shed blood of Jesus. He had a plan to redeem man through the sacrifice of Christ so that we can stand before God justified, not because of self-righteousness, but because of righteousness that has been imputed unto us through the grace of God, by the goodness of Jesus Christ, given to us as a free gift. We can't earn the salvation of the Lord. We can't earn life with Christ eternally. We are only able to believe by faith in the finished work of Jesus, that Jesus did everything, because without him we can truly do nothing good. The Bible says there are none good, not one. There are none righteous, not one. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of our sin is death. Death being the destruction of the soul as it's separated from God eternally and cast into the lake of fire. It sounds very bad. I understand that. We're not out of here to just speak doom and gloom and to talk about hellfire, but we're here to say that God wants to save you from that eternal destination so that we can be heirs and joint heirs with Christ. We can be given the free gift of eternal life and the promise that we will reign with him as a royal priesthood and a holy nation. And the Bible commands us to not be conformed with the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. God will take our stony heart that is dead inside of our chest and he'll make it new. He'll give us a heart of flesh and he'll write the law of God upon the tablets of your heart so that we might know good from evil. But the good from evil comes through the conviction of God, through the, the knowledge of God. We have a knowledge of how to please God. And we love the things that He loves and we hate the things that He hates. We turn from our sin that displeases Him, not because the grace of God is insufficient, but because the grace of God leads us to repentance. The goodness of God opening our eyes so that we might see that God did not send His Son to save us merely so that we might continue in our sin and take for granted that sacrifice that has been extended for us, but so that we might acknowledge the severity of the situation, understand the, the, the seriousness of what Jesus did for us, and to say, because Jesus died for us and He gave His life, literally his life, and shed his blood on that cross. His blood was spilled, his suffering was poured out like water upon the ground. We might understand the severity of the situation and say, God, I want to be holy as you are holy. I want to obey you because I love you, not to be accepted by you, but because I love you that much. And I don't want to defile my flesh. I don't want to live in rebellion. I don't want to have a mindset of witchcraft. I want to submit myself under the hand of a mighty God who is then able to lift me up and give me strength in the dark days of life, in the perils, in the problems, in the troubles that seem to always want to just grab a hold of us and pull us down into that pit of despair. We can say, Jesus, I am here crying out to you. I need you. Save me. Rescue me. And God is faithful. Pride cannot enter into the kingdom of God, my friends. It takes a tender heart of humility that will cry out to God with an acknowledgement of sin, saying, Without you, God, we are nothing, but through you and with you, by your grace, we are all things and we can do all things because of you, because you live through us. And the righteousness of Christ can take you from glory to glory. And if you are his, he will love you with an everlasting love and he will be there for you. And I know I might not speak perfectly i might misspeak and i might not word things the best but i know this at the very end of all things i know that jesus christ loves you he wants a relationship with you and we are all too often denying him 
We mock him. We laugh and scorn at the things of God. We take his name in vain. We think that those who speak about Jesus are foolish. Foolish. 